G'day Reefers! I'm Anya and welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. We're here at the prop room and today we're going to be making Parankora Combo Gardens. It's really easy to see why branching hammers are such a popular choice for reefers around the world. Not only is there a beautiful diversity of different colors available, but one head very quickly has the capacity to grow into two. These parancora, which were previously known as Euphilia parancora, have recently been renamed to the genus Fimbriophilia and they are found only in one area in Australia in the Northern Territory. I thought seeing as we've got such a beautiful diversity of colors in stock right now that what better way to showcase the range than to make some beautiful combo gardens that allow for reefers to have that instant effect from the get-go. But first, before we get started, we might be wise to give a peace offering to the whale so that she doesn't splash me in the process. Today it's a Vitalis grazer ring. So to get these combo parancora gardens made, We've got some pre-soaked real reef rock and marco rock. We're also going to be using an iodine based dip from Seachem. The iodine is a good coral disinfectant and it also prevents any potential rot on any cut tissue. We're going to be using my favorite CG gel glue from Ecotech. We've also got a couple of buckets and a few extra containers on the fragging bench, a towel, and a spray bottle with natural seawater. To actually do the cutting, I've got a really good range of coral snips here, but also to help cut the skeleton, we're going to be using a griffin bandsaw. So let's get into it. selection we have to choose from today is roughly categorized into six different color variants from the wholesaler. These are teal green reverse stem which is the green stem and the purple tip, ultra marble, marble, ultra and orange which is actually kind of a little more on the coppery side. So we've got our containers labeled and filled and I thought it'd be good to pop them in before they sh shut so we don't get confused. So we've got our different colors in the categories and now it's time to get these cut down into single heads so that each rock is going to have one of each color. So we've got eight rocks, hopefully eight <laughs> heads of each color. And on these occasions where we've used the tile, I'm just gonna pop them off 
the frag tile that we had previously used. So when the opportunity arises that I could just use the coral snippers, I'm just going to do that. Preserve the blade. But there's bound to be a number of cases where the hand tool is just not going to cut it. <laughs> so when Parancora grows from a single head into two, it usually splits the existing head. And so you end up with this kind of V-shaped valley. And generally, it's higher risk if you're cutting through the flesh if it isn't disjointed already naturally. And so this kind of a separation is where the griffin bandsaw is going to really play its best role. Another reason for using the bandsaw is when the skeleton is just too hard, too difficult, too strong to cut with the bone cutters, such as this one. So we'll leave that for the griffin. I've done all the cutting I can by hand. It's time to fire this baby up. Another huge advantage of processing these corals this way is that by removing most of the skeleton, we're able to reveal any potential pests or parasites that have embedded their way deep into the skeleton, such as lithophaga mussels, or in this case, a big nasty bristle worm. So you'll notice that I'm not exactly wearing a lot of PPE using the bandsaw today. I do have safety eyewear, however, I would really prefer to do this kind of a job without wearing gloves so that I have far more control over my fingers and what I'm doing. Those of you who have never used a diamond bandsaw before, this blade is really not sharp. It's like paper thin and it's pretty much the safest cutting blade you'll ever cut, touch. So we've finally processed all the Parancora into as close to single polyps as is possible. We've got our eight base pieces of rock here and at this point it can be helpful to have a couple of smaller base pieces of rubble available to mount onto something like some of these flat ones just to give it a bit more dimension and also trying to remember that these parancora will continue to grow branches outward so by gluing them on slightly different angles you're able to allow for that potential space for growth it's time to get gluing so let's get going
always used a coral feeder to drop water from above to set the glue. I've recently started to put seawater into a spray bottle and this works very well with frags as well but especially in cases like these where the corals are sitting out of water for an extended period of time while I muck around with the design of these gardens. Have it. We've successfully made eight combo para and Cora gardens which are going to look absolutely sensational once they settle and the polyps come out. We've definitely got one of every colour featured on every rock and they should be available to some lucky customers that are shopping at our store in the next coming weeks. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. My name's Anya, happy reefing! That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!